Right guys, so we are back. It's the Edge podcast episode number 28 and this is one of the most highly demanded and requested podcasts that we've had so far. The reason being is our community want to know all about Alex, formerly known as Pock, who is our guest today. So Alex started with us years ago doing reselling back in the COVID era. Since then has moved on to Amazon and absolutely kills it. So we're going to dive into his story today, learn everything that we can from him and share some nuggets of information with you and hopefully you find this motivating and inspiring because you should he's doing crazy numbers hasn't been at it that long and shows you what's possible with amazon fba so and if i'm a bit ropey guys don't judge me on it i have not done a podcast in a little while so let's get straight into it, alex thank you for coming on mate how are you uh, doing oh no, good finally good to be here i think we've i reckon we've Rearrange this about three or four times. Says, I've been busy. You've yeah, been busy. Several times. Yeah. Recently, we've had to rearrange even more because you've been killing it recently, haven't you? With um, doing a lot higher volume mm-hmm. of inventory. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we finally got the time to do it. And as I said, when we posted the clips on like TikTok and stuff, when you yeah. did some content with us, everyone was like, where's the pod? Yeah. Where's the pod? Where's Must the have pod? got about, I reckon about 10, 10, 20 messages probably every week saying... When's the pod dropping? When's the pod dropping? Yeah. But finally here. Here's the official one. Yeah. Right. Okay. So we'll jump into it right at the very start. So actually we'll go before as we normally do with guests. So a bit more on your background. Did you go to university? Like um, academically, how would you? Um, just so we can give people a bit of a light of how you've got to where you're at today. Yeah. So never went to university. Um, well, as a lad, I went to like, I did like a foundation degree. Yep in IT, believe it or not, right. um, which fell out of literally, I think I did a two year course. I think I did about six, seven months, dropped out of that. That was when I was about 20. And then I've done, uh, I actually went to college. I did hospitality and catering, which is like working in restaurants and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. So I reckon up until the age of what, 23, 24? Yep. Actually no, before that, I reckon probably up until the age of 21 maybe 22, I did like hospitality jobs, uh, waiting in bars, restaurants, yep. things like that. Like the more so traditional student yeah, jobs. Yeah, 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 basically, yeah. And that's where a lot of people start naturally, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, 100%. But I think, and again, hopefully this podcast will show people they don't have to do that. No. Like, cause I think, I, well, I would imagine, and I know it, it's the same for me. I know when I was like, I started reselling a lot younger um, when I was around about 16, but if I could have started Amazon at 16, I think yeah. I would be in a completely different 100%. situation right now. Yeah. And I bet you feel the same. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, on the back of that. So I think I would say probably from then, and then I actually started to do, um, I joined a network marketing company, yep. which is like, maybe basically for anyone who doesn't know, it's basically what other people would perceive as a pyramid scheme. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, where basically you were selling like telecommunications that so you've got, phone bills, gas and electric, all kind yeah. of utilities and stuff like that. Yeah. So I did that for about four to five years. I reckon up until the age of what? 25, 24, yeah. 25. And that gave me a lot of kind of business um, experience because yeah. I was traveling, went to a lot of events all around Europe. Yeah. And I met a lot of people that I still speak to this day. So I built a lot of connections from yeah. that. And funnily enough, our other videographer. Yes, Kieran. Yeah, yeah Kieran. Yeah. Shout out KTS. Yeah, shout out Kieran. Um, so you met him through that as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, Weird, yeah. Super yeah. small world. Yeah, yeah. So he used to, that's how I met Kieran through network marketing. Yeah. I think we would have been, because Kieran's a bit younger than me. So I would have been 22, maybe. Yeah. And also that's how I met Lewis as well. Yeah, yeah. From the company. I remember yeah, yeah. I, the first time I come here, I you, I think I picked you up in my car. Yeah, you yeah. You got into the car. He said, I was like, Who, who's your videographer? Is it Kieran? Yeah. I know Kieran for like five years ago. Yeah. Then I walked up, up, up the stairs. He was there videoing for you. Yeah, yeah. This so, is a small world, yeah, isn't yeah. it? Small world. Um, so yeah, so you did all of that. And then what, uh, sort of as you joined Aftermarket, where were you at then? So to be honest, I actually started reselling before Aftermarket. Yeah. So obviously the network marketing company that finished, I made, I made decent money. Yeah. But the main thing I got from that was the connections and kind yeah. of the experience on how to kind of, I suppose, work for yourself, yeah. being your own boss, having a little yeah. taste of it. Yeah. Although I was still working at the time, um, it gave me kind of a glimpse into business, what's possible if you kind of double down on your efforts. Yeah, yeah, got it. Um, and then from then, all my jobs I've had, probably about two or three jobs, like yep. sales jobs. Yep. So obviously low basic and then high commission. Yep. So the last job I left before quitting, uh, quitting that to go into Amazon, which we'll touch into later. Yeah. That was um, like kitchen sales. Got it. So I was like going out measuring kitchens, obviously getting paid that way. Yeah. 
Um, but going back to what you said before with reselling, so this was in the height of COVID. Yep. So a guy that I knew from my network marketing company, I saw him post, uh, I think he posted an Instagram story of, you know, Gary V. Yeah, yeah. Um, where basically, you think it's called Trash Talk, Gary yep. V Trash Talk. Yeah. Where basically he goes around in America. I've seen it. In, yeah, um, yeah. Basically like car boot sales, but in America, the car boot sales are like on steroids compared to what's in yeah, England. Yeah, yeah. He literally goes around buying and selling stuff like mugs, could be antiques, um, I've it. We, collectibles. I we found some content with him where it was like, I think it's like toy cars. Yeah, that's like, what it was, like yeah, yeah. Anything, everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So basically, well, they call it garage sales in, in, yeah, in America. Yeah. So I got hooked on that. So I watched, I was literally at home. I was on furlough at work. I had all this free time. Yeah. It was in the height of COVID. So where literally no one could leave the house. Yeah. Everyone was just in the house. So I watched a few YouTube videos on that. I kind of got hooked. But the worst bit was... I want. I wanted to like take action straight away. Yeah. I wanted to go to these car boots. I want to go to charity shops. Just basically, just buy and sell. Yeah. And then I ended up just going around in my house, picking up old books. Out. Okay, I'm going to put it on eBay and yeah, sell yeah. it. So I kind of got addicted that way. Yeah, yeah. And then when um, when obviously COVID ended, I started going to car boot sales every Sunday. Getting up, but based on every Sunday in my old job, I used to work. Was it ten till four? So I'd go. I get up at five o'clock on a Sunday. Get the car boot for six. Do two three hours. Yeah. Probably spend hundred quid. You might make hundred quid if you're lucky. Yeah, yeah. Um, go to work, come back, list it all in eBay, and then I'll just keep doing that. And then sort of going to charity shops, buying like I don't know football shirts, collectibles. Literally How did anything. you know what to be going for? So this was just on YouTube videos. Like I saw some guy buy, I don't know, could have been an old PS One. Yeah. For twenty quid, sell it for sixty quid. Got it. And then as soon as you get um, you got a bit of cash flow going. It's, it's nowhere near as scalable as Amazon, which yeah, is yeah. why I stopped doing it. So you were already reselling when you came to aftermarket. Yeah. Um, how was it you found us and like, what was the first sort of stuff you started with? Come across aftermarket from like things like an Instagram ad. Sponsored ad. Sponsored ad, yeah, yeah. something like that. We can't run any of them anymore. Thank yeah. you very much, Meta. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so yeah. So the transition from kind of obviously, like I mentioned before, was doing buying and selling from, from car boots, from um, charity shops and even like Facebook Marketplace. I'd, yeah. I'd buy... I'd scale face at Marketplace and I'd find like a, an old, I don't know, PS2 bundle, yep. PS3 bundle. Uh, I'd make like 50 quid on that or something like that. Yep. But with that, it's a lot of effort they have to put in. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I joined Aftermarket and then I jumped straight into like trainers. So yeah, that's yeah. So sneaker resellers as, as yeah, it's known, yeah. um, which was good. Back in this, you're talking like over two years ago now. Yeah. So then it was, what is it? it still is lucrative now. Yeah, yeah. But I think to really kind of, with sneaker reselling, you need to go all in yeah, yeah. and kind of get bots. And then on, if you buy yeah. bots, like you, like, like you and, mentioned, yeah, there's that, a lot of upfront costs. Yeah. And that's where sort of, I fell out of love with sneaker reselling. Like when I started like eight years ago around the, like the first Yeezy release, it was so simple and you'd make so much money. Like for us, all we would do is literally we would um, either inject a piece of code into the HTML on a website, or we would uh, just have a link. Uh, like, so with, when it was the, um, Adidas splash page. It's a landing so page, queue. wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So basically yeah. we just have a special, when it first started out, we just have a special link. That link would then automatically bypass the queue. So we could just keep going in, out, in, out. And it's like every order confirmation was like 500 pound bank, 500 pound yeah. bank, 500 pound <laughs> bank. And it was just like money printing. It yeah. was boxed. But it got to the point where that landscape started to shift. And obviously um, as more and more people started on it, as some of these methods start to get leaked, patches would be put in place and then it went into botting more and that that this is where i fell out of love with it where it came to the point where the risk reward ratio for me personally and i'm not saying this for all people some people still do it and thrive at it i'm very aware yeah. of that but for me personally it wasn't really worth it where you could be putting thousands of pounds into the setup for a bot bots were very expensive back then like cyber you were looking at paying like 5k just for the key um to to use that bot <clears throat> Um, and then from there, um, you would then be running like running costs. So the proxies and stuff like that, you could easily rack up another few hundred or thousands of pounds in additional fees. And then it's like, so you go into every, um, sort of sneaker release and the, the stakes are so high yeah. because where before I was just copying and pasting a link now. I'm thousands of pounds in the red from the get-go. So you got the, now they've yeah. developed about the confirmed app, haven't they? Yeah, stuff like yeah there's loads of stuff. So. And so the pressure was on to actually secure. And if you didn't secure, then me, like for me at that time, my week was ruined. Yeah, yeah, it massive would really hit me, yeah. Um, so 
that's where I sort of started to to shift. And then we ended up falling into the COVID era. Um, and that's where everything changed for yeah. reselling, really. Like yeah. that was the reseller's dream. And, and I think that when we got into the uh, COVID and um, what, I think that one of the main things that it's done for people, because yes, it was for a lot of people, extremely shitty period, especially if you had like a brick and mortar store, small family owned business, very tough. Um, but for, I think for younger people that were looking to make money online, it opened so many doors and it taught a lot of lessons with regards to business fundamentals, because like with, um, this is where a lot of people jumped in, but like for me, when my sneaker reselling, and then like COVID and everything combined, all the skills that you could pick up during that period for anyone. So like for me personally, it was bulk export at six, like 16, 17 years old. This is prior to COVID, but still the same sort of narrative where 16, 17 years old, being able to manage cash flow for a sneaker yeah. business, ex building relationships, exporting um, pallets of trainers to China and building like a logistical network to do that and facilitate it. Those were all key skills that a lot of people sort of don't realize it's actually quite easy to pick up as long as you just dip your toe in. It's yeah, not going to be hard. Isn't yeah. it? And is. you just keep learning. And that's why like, I think reselling and these sort of side hustles, they give you the confidence to then go away and start your own business because you start to learn key principles and business fundamentals that then when you're sort of, you, let's say you're building up your side hustle, let's just say you just started Amazon, got to a point where you're doing 15 and a quid a month. You'll then get to a point where you think, oh, well, if I actually put a couple more hours in, could I get it to, to two, three, four K. Yeah. And then it's like, well, I know what this is like. I'm going to double down now. And I've got the confidence and self-belief to actually just pursue this business full time. And I think people would find setting up their own business so much more seamless if they just started with a side hustle like this. Yeah. hundred percent. So for you, what we, we touched on the trainers, but what else was you doing around that time? So I was, yeah, so like I said, I was reselling trainers. So you, like I said, you're probably making fifth, between 1500 pound a pop. Yep. So you've got Nike Dunks, I'm selling Yeezys, um, Jordans, whatever. Yep. But I found that, like I said, you can make good money, but it's nowhere reliable. Yep. Or you, obviously you're waiting on Nike draws, sign up to raffles. Yep. Well, it is not time consuming as such, um, but there's, there's literally no risk to that. Yeah. Um, so I still, I still do it every now and again, but it's not, it's just hit and miss kind of thing. That, that's sort of like what I think what the eBay landscape has come a little bit more yeah. at the moment. Um, why we've sort of pivoted as aftermarket arbitrage more towards Amazon because people want a consistent income, especially yeah. now with like cost of living crisis, people actually feeling the stresses of, um, inflation. Nowadays, people actually want an income that they can rely upon with eBay. Yes, you can still build it, but it's not as easy as to do with yeah. Amazon. And it's for me, I view it as more hit and miss. I'll be like, right, there's two opportunities this week. I can make two, three hundred quid. Is what it is I'll jump it. on them. Yeah, if see I, what happens. Yeah. But I'm not that bothered. Yeah. Um, whereas it's just like extra. Yeah. But with Amazon, that's where I think you could sort of focus, um, focus and concentrate your efforts and sort of view that as your bread and butter because it's, it's more like a proper business, isn't it, Amazon? Yeah, a million percent. And it, it, is so scalable yeah, it's proven and it's one of the sort of business models that i view that like as long as you're doing the basics and you understand everything and you're doing you're, you're consistent day in day out you can't really go wrong yeah. um so yeah so you got in at that point did sneakers what were the other hot items from the covid period so at the time like i said during COVID, I will never see anything like that again. Yep. It was just literally that absolute money printer. Yep. Um, I think with COVID as well, for a lot of people, it was kind of a sink or swim moment as well. Yep. So either you thrived or if you had, like yep. you said, a bricks and mortar business, like you'd struggle because yep. you literally wouldn't be able to open. Yep. Um, so with, I was reselling, um, so obviously sneakers, and then we got into um, weights. So obviously all the gyms were shut. The weights were now crazy. The weights, that they? was ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. So basically how this works, at the time, but so basically go back to, these were from Argos. Yep. So, this is from a couple of people that I knew. I don't know if they're still about in the Discord, but they were basically, they ran uh, a bot. So basically. It was um, Yogurt Bot, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was yeah, Yogurt yeah. Bot. It used to be called Our Goose. Yeah. Well, it was just I don't for think Argos. it's around anymore though. They still, well, it is, but the, I'm, I'm not Yogurt sure. Bot's still, still around. Uh, the guy who uh, owns it, uh, he's a very nice lad. Um, but yeah, I remember when he did that, like, because people were running like ACO. Uh, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. Initially, so basically what it was, from Argos, there was three different kind of weights, 
bundles. So you had like 50, I think it was 25 kg, 50 kg, and I think up to 90 kg. So you get like a, dumb, a couple of dumbbells, barbell, and then a few other bits. Yep. So bear in mind, these are pretty heavy. And I, at the time, I only had a, I had a Sirocco. The boot was like that big. Um, so basically, I'd use Argos as kind of a, a distribution center, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. They were just, because basically with Argos, you have, I think it's a week. So you say if I ordered uh, this weight set from Argos, yeah. I ordered five of them, for example, they'd hold it for a week. So I'd advertise it on Facebook Marketplace. And then if it didn't sell within that time frame, you can extend the button where you click extend. So basically you can, so Argos can effectively hold your item for about two weeks. And that's the thing. It was literally risk-free money. No risk whatsoever. Because it was, even though we're reselling, a lot of it's no risk and you still get a refund. But yeah. this was sort of a step further. This was because, even, wasn't even any risk. Yeah, because they would literally just hold it. You lost yeah. the sale in yeah, first. Yeah, okay. <laughs> like it was, it was, again, it was another thing. It was like a money hack. Yeah. Um, and it was, I remember um, Oggy, shout out Oggy. That's who it was, I think. It was yeah. running the, the And slots. I remember Oggy, so... We didn't have Argos monitors at the time. It was just him and another guy. I can't and, remember his name. And Oggy used to manually sit on Argos. And just clicking. Refresh. <laughs> and looking for when they would come in stock. Yeah. And he was our restock monitor. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he would just post as soon as they were in at what location. And that was like, a, again, yeah, gold mine, honey pot. But the weights, brilliant. There was other stuff throughout COVID though. What else did you jump on? So we jumped on, so touching back to the way, so how, how, how the logistics of it works. So I'd advertise, yeah. I'd, I'd go and pick up one of them so I could take a few pictures and stuff. Yeah. And then um, I would just literally advertise on Facebook Marketplace. I'd get you know, inundated with messages. Yeah. And then I'd just pick one, right, okay, you could have it this time. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'd go to Argos, pick it up, put it in my car, drive to the, normally I'd, drive, I'd drop it off, charge it extra, drive to the customs house. It could be, I don't know, 10 minutes on the road. They take it out, they give me, they, they pay me and I probably make, I don't know, 50, 60 quid on top. Yeah. And the heart of it, maybe even hundred pounds on top because all gyms were shut. Literally there was nowhere else to, to get weights from. Yeah, yeah. And it was, um, it was, and that was, yeah, that was the beauty of it. And then also we had um, weight benches as well. Yep. So any kind of fitness related stuff. So it was dumbbells. Um, like I said, the, the dumbbell sets and barbell sets from Argos, then weight benches. Um, and then from that, a little bit after, obviously we're still in COVID, we um, cleared out a lot of fire pits, like chimneys, garden chimneys. So again, I was buying these from, I think I got the best ones from Morrison's, you know, the La, yes. La Hacienda ones. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, think really. we were about, I think I paid 75 pounds. They're pretty big, so I can only fit, I think I could have fit in my car at the time about four. So what I would do is, I'd obviously advertise it on, on, uh, on Facebook. I think in the height of it, from 75 to about, I was selling for like 160. Yep. I was selling about about 10 a week sometimes. Couldn't get enough of them. And do you remember the um, electric heaters? Yes, a few of them. They yeah, yeah really the, the big well, sandy yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah, I sold a few of them. But the downside to that is they're quite bulky. Yeah, yeah. So I tried to focus on smaller, smaller stuff. Items. Like the weights were good because you could just literally store them at Argus and yeah. the fire pits were good because they, they sold very quick. And all this, because at first, and even with your Amazon, it was all just from your living room, wasn't it? Yeah, living room, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So this was before I even touched Amazon. Yeah. This was all eBay. Um, I was still... Doing car boots, kind of. I got back into it again. But once I knew the scalability of Amazon, I just knocked it on the head. Yeah, it yeah. wasn't worth it at all. And um, so those were some of the hot sort of items throughout COVID. Yeah. Did you do any PS5 reselling? Yeah, yeah. I forgot about uh, PS5s. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. They were absolutely... They, 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 were, they were cooking for about two years. Yeah. yeah. It was weird. It's been a sad day that they're yeah, completely was, finished now. Now but, you can walk in back off the shelf somewhere. Yeah. I remember like the PS5, when it first came about, everyone was apprehensive on to whether to buy it or not. Yeah. And I remember like, I put a few pre-orders in, we put some information out saying like, look, we don't know how this is going to go. Put your pre-orders in and, uh, cause you're not going to get charged until um, like the release date. So you can try and sell them beforehand. Um, and I remember as we were sort of approaching, we seen the sales starting to pick up and it was like, fucking hell and, and at that time I remember going into Tesco and just ordering them to all my local yeah, stores ridiculous. and then also with game you could just pre-order on game dead easy yeah. like, the, like it seemed like with the PS5 at first the demand was just not there no. and, and with Xbox Series X as well demand like initially I'm talking like day one pre-orders it was so easy but like I know someone that's, that had 200 pre-orders PS5s oh. and at that 
time, you could double your money. Yeah. So what's that? 200 times, let's, say, just, let's just say 200 times 500 quid. What's that in profit? What's the numbers on that? My maths is really bad here, guys. I'm not good at maths either. Key in behind the camera. 200 times 500. 10K, innit? 100 grand. 100 grand? 100,000. I'm not good at maths. 100,000 in potential profits. But that was that was when they first come out, wasn't yeah. it? Like, I so think... this is when people were nervous. Yeah. Because like, oh, this is a high ticket item. It's quite expensive. A lot of us had just been used to trainers and stuff like that. And like, let's say the weights, the fire pits, 450 was, you tied up a... a it was a high cost yeah. of goods, yeah. But the the sort of, when when the official release happened, I think it was in November, um, they just went crazy. Yeah. And I remember like, Chris around Christmas, I remember being sat at my uncle's and um, I had two PS5s left and I thought, right, I'm just going to bump the prices up on these, um, put them both to 1,100 quid. Both sold literally within 10 minutes. I had to leave my uncle's, same guy, bought both of them, come collect them. And so what was that like? So f they were 450. So that is like 650 profit on each yeah, one of two easy. of them. And, and like, it was just money. Plus it was printing. Q4 as well, wasn't it? So they would have... Yeah. They would have um, been more expensive. Yeah. And, and and that was it. Exactly. Everyone wanted for Christmas. Yeah, yeah. And that carried on. And people made ridiculous money. Even if it was just for like the ACO, the auto yeah, yeah. checkout. Yeah, yeah. With like and Argos. running slots and stuff. That's yeah, yeah. what a lot of people do. Yeah. Make, just, because for them, it's, it was risk-free. All yeah. they would do was just run over, on other people's behalf and take a payoff to success fee. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was brilliant time for reselling. I can't wait for the PS6. Yeah. I hope there's some sort of... Yeah, some, some sort, sort of, of chip shortage. Yeah that prevent, prevents it being mass released. Yeah. Um, so do, I, I didn't get on to PS5 till about a year when that the year from release date. But even then the demand was crazy. I think I sold. Because I, I think it was the high cost of goods. Yeah, yeah. Like before I understood what, I didn't even know what ROI was yeah, when yeah. we started reselling. Um, I just saw that the demand was ridiculous. I think it was a, there was a digital as well, wasn't there? Yes. So that, that was, for me, that, that was more profitable. Yeah, yeah. 350 or 360. Probably yeah, selling yeah. that for what, 500 quid. Yeah. All this would be local as well. I, I, I never sold any on, any on eBay. I just put it on um, Facebook Marketplace again. And then I'd literally drop it off or the collect. So it's just easy money. Super simple. So before we get onto the juicy bit, Amazon, that I imagine a lot of you here are waiting for, the reselling period, COVID, all of that. Do you have like a rough idea of what you did profit wise? Profit wise, you're probably talking, I added up about 15 to 8K, something so like 15, that. 15, 20 grand. And that was we'll take. done in, it was not really, it, the number of well, hours. Kind of the, you, the COVID period lasted forever, didn't yeah, it? Yeah. What it sounded like, anyway. Yeah. But 15, 20 grand, like that's a good, good sort of wage to be adding yeah. alongside your other work and um, requires way less hours. Yeah, literally. It literally click, clicks of a button. A few drives here and there. That's it. <laughs> it is. And it's just if you're willing to put that extra yeah, in. Yeah. Like people got angry that people would always get angry with resellers around that time. But it's like, I remember like my argument would always be like, well, with PS5s, I would be sat on Argus's website waiting for a drop at 4am. Yeah. Ready but to they, they, they don't see it. They, they just see the bit or the scalper. Da, 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 yeah, da. yeah. But they don't think, right, That's well, how business works. Yeah, yeah. So. I've actually treated this. That's like this is. is my actual income. So... Yeah. I'm going to put the effort in. I'm going to, if you want one personally, just wake up at 4am. Mm -hmm. It's easy to buy. Literally. But if you're not willing to wake up a few hours earlier, then there's a price to pay. Yeah. Because if there's an arbitrage opportunity, people are always going to take it. Um, well, that's uh, just how the world works anyway. Yeah. And, and this is it. People are like, our YouTube at the moment is going crazy over the electric blankets, which we'll touch oh, yeah, on yeah, later. Yeah. <laughs> but like, they're going crazy over it. And it's... The, it's sort of demonized and it seems the worst thing in the world, but people forget, like someone said like, so basically what you're doing is you are buying goods <laughs> and selling them at an inflated price. And said, yeah. isn't that what Aldi are doing? Yeah. Literally do you not forget works. that they're doing that? Yeah. And then do you not forget that the brand that built it also got the component parts at a cheaper price and then yeah. made their mark up? At every single step of the supply chain, yeah. the price is going up. We're becoming part of that supply chain. Yes, you might not like it, but if people can make money from it, they're going to do it. Yeah, definitely. So into Amazon. <clears throat> now, you got started, do you, do you know right, roughly how so long So I got ago? started, so I registered my account in January of 22, but obviously with the process stuff, about a month. Yeah. Um, so my first sale was like 3rd of Feb, okay. something like that. 
Because remember, it was I know the exact date because it, it was the time when my daughter was born. Got it. So I started, I think I made me account on like, like the 1st of January. Because I said, yep. I kind of had enough of like PS5s and stuff. Yep. I wanted something a bit more kind of sustainable, like yep. a proper business. Because like we touched on before with the reselling, it's good around Q4 because everything's, everything goes yep. to the roof. But it's not kind of a true reflection. Then obviously PS5s and all that kind of stuff dies down. Yep. You, I'm not selling weights anymore. COVID's ended. Yep. Um, and I kind of didn't, wasn't really enjoying my job that much, yep. you know, the job that I was in. So I, I set myself kind of a goal that I want to start Amazon. Initially, I said, look, if I can make an extra thousand pound a month alongside my job, I'd be happy. Yeah. Then it kind of and that's, snowballed. That's the thing. I think a lot of people come into it with that mindset. When you catch the bug and you realise what, what is the opportunity yeah. you've actually got in front of it's you. It's like a different animal to yeah, yeah. any reselling. Yeah. And when you get to that point where you're like, right, I've just ticked off a thousand pounds a month alongside my work. So now I'm going to aim for 2000. Yeah. And then when you get there, yeah, right. Well, that didn't require wasn't that, that hard really. No, it didn't <laughs> require that much effort. So right, let's push it to free. Yeah. You get to free. And then I think probably around that number is where people sort of start to contemplate what, what they're doing. Definitely. And like, because even at free grand, you're not going to, you're not taking out three grand a month. No, no, Let's no, not no. get that confused, no, no, guys. No. You make a free grand re profit. Reinvest in everything. Yeah, but which I was yeah, doing. want to keep reinvesting and keep growing that pot for as long as possible. And that's why it's great to have a nine to five. Like I'm not against yeah, the yeah. nine to five whatsoever. Sure. I went into a nine to five. Like I've had many, but the the point is, is that use that nine to five to tie you over and keep building, building, building. Yeah. And before you know it, with that Amazon where you're doing three grand profit month, then four, then five, whatever, you, as you keep scaling, before you know it, you sat on a pretty big pot of money and you've got a lot of money to play with. But what that money will also do then is provide you with the safety net you need yeah. to leave that nine to five if you want to go. Because you could say, like, let's say you were used to earning 20 grand a month, uh, 20 grand a year, sorry, um, from your nine to five or 30 grand. But if you've built up a pot of Amazon... 50k uh, maybe yeah. over the course of a year uh, yeah. and then you think right well if worst case scenario i can take 20k out and then i'm safe like safety net yeah safety yeah. net i've got that like worst case scenario i've got my safety net financially and always remember guys you can just go back to the nine to five Literally. it's not like you're banished yeah, yeah, from yeah, the yeah. nine to five world <laughs> if you've decided yeah. to do your own venture yeah just get another um, job yeah and i think a lot of people employees actually like it when i left my, like my when i got to the point where when i left um, the partners at my firm could not believe what we'd built, what we was doing, all of that stuff with aftermarket arbitrage. And they were fully supportive of me leaving. They said, go and chase it, go and build what you can and go chase your dream. But if it goes wrong, pick up the phone and you've got your job back. Yeah. It's well, I don't that. think, I don't th I think you was quite a unique situation there because I don't think a lot of employees would be like that personally. Of course, but... That doesn't mean there's not another employer out there yeah, of course. who's going to yeah. want you. But then the point of that sort of, that I was trying to get to there was that if you've left and your employer says to you, well, what you've got a gap on your CV there of a year. Yeah. What did you do? Well, I tried to start my own business. Yeah, I learned this. I did this. I achieved this. You're bringing in skills and experience that... 95% of the rest of the workforce will never get. It's just life skills, isn't it? Really? Yeah. Not even business, just life. Yeah. And and the what like I think the, the sort of the pros of having your own business in terms of even just managing your time, yeah, having a routine, being organized. Employers want that. Yeah. So if you if you if anything, you're gonna go back in almost a stronger position because you're adding you've added diversity to your CV. Um and you've shown there's a bit more to you and just staying sort of robot mode yeah. and just being willing to just stay in the system. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so where were we at? What, what was we was talking about? So talking about when I started Amazon. Yeah. So like I said, I started Amazon. First sale would have been like, I uh, remember the 3rd of February. Yeah. Um, I think that was from, so basically when I started Amazon, uh, my account was like inactive like a month for yep. some reason. I don't know why. Um, so in that month, I started just retail arbitrage. That's how I yep. start. I recommend anyone to start in retail doing that way. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'll go around, I think I went around all my local stores. So Sainsbury's, Tesco, Aldi, literally every stores. But at, at that time, I didn't have that much capital to, capital to play with. So what did you start with? Probably started with initially, I think I got a £500. Yep. And then I sent my first shipment in. And then once I kind of knew it, it sold. Once, once I understand the concept worked, I probably took a two grand out of my savings. Yep. 
and then just kind of plow we'll that in. Because with Amazon, that we'll touch on later, um, it's, it's just a capsule game. Yep. The more it's not like another business where it's like a service where you've got money coming yep. in. You literally need to spend more money. You make more to money. make more. Money. There's no secret. That's no. literally yeah. how it is. Uh, and, that, and yeah, and that's something that that is one of the, when we do the calls every day, and pe- people will say to me, "I've got ten grand. Right? Yeah. Can I start?" Because some people think ten grand is not enough. Yeah. Um, and it is more than enough that and like, but I'm 10 grand is like an outlier. Most people come to us with, let's say 500 to a grand. But even if you're in a position where you've got 10,000 pounds, I will still recommend in month one, just spend 500 quid. Yeah. The yeah. reason being is because it's not, it's not necessarily, you could put 10 grand in. Yes, you're going to make good money, but you've also got to enjoy the process because what's the pot you would hate to invest 10 grand into inventory. And after your first shipment, think I fucking hate because this. Because you're not going to have the knowledge. Yeah. You, know, you might have 10 grand, but you're better off taking nine grand and you say keeping that. Yeah. And then once you've kind of got the knowledge of yeah. what, to, what, what, what sells, what doesn't sell, yeah. otherwise you're going to be on the back foot. Get proof of concept for yeah. yourself. Make sure you enjoy it. Double down. Yeah, literally. That should be like the steps. And that's yeah. exactly what you did. Yeah. Um, so yeah, go on, carry on. So you put that 2K in. Yeah. So again, there's all, all this was done from living room, from a lot from my uh, from my house um got to the point where i was sending out so basically what i do is i'd work like some days for example i'd I, i'd work like nine to five for example so i get up at seven do an hour's ra go to work on my lunch break sometimes i go and do ra yeah yeah um and then after work five so i don't know half five till six whatever because where i live luckily there's quite a, i pass loads of shops on the way yeah. we used to pass loads of shops on the way to and from work so in that respect i was quite lucky um, because I know a lot of people do, do live, if you live in quite a city or a remote area it will be quite difficult Challenging. Um, so yeah I'd, be, I'd just absolutely smash an RA uh, to the point where it was like addictive I think I was actually addicted to it yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was that bad because is, uh, and that's sort of the thing is once you start you'll never really view a shop the same yeah, yeah because yeah. when you you actually just when like uh, 99% of the population are walking around to buy their weekly groceries. Yeah, yeah. You're actually just looking for income and opportunities. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I completely, I can completely resonate with you there. But the one thing that I want to touch on and just dive into a little bit more there, you were putting in the hours before work, during work, yeah. and your lunches. I'll be, I'll be on Discord. Yeah. And uh, work. after work. Yeah. What was your why? Because I always talk to people about, you need to find your own why. Why are you going to do this? Why are you going to put the extra time in? What do you want? What was your reason for going and doing the extra mile? I think it was just, just to be free. Yep. Like, I, I'd say money, but it wasn't even, at that point, it wasn't even about money. Yep. So I didn't like, I liked the idea of just kind of being my own boss. Yep. Because I had a taste of it in, obviously, what we spoke about earlier, yep, another kind of business cool. ventures. Yeah. Um, and I know a few, few friends have got their own businesses. It's just, it's just the freedom. Yep. So the money, you can get money, money comes and goes, you can get money yep. doing anything. Yep. Um, but that, to me, it, it was just, it was just the freedom. Like you can, like, that you can do what you want, when you want, yep. you don't have anyone to answer to, you know, if you want to go on holiday, yep. you don't have to ring anyone. So to me, that was my motivation. So I, yep. if I said to myself, like, okay, I'll give it six to seven months. I'll yep. see what position we're at. Um, and then that's, that's exactly what happened. But I was, I was abs- to the point where it was probably unhealthy, Like I was working some like towards the latter stage of it, I'd, I had a lot of um, once my capsule grew, I had a lot more shipments going out, a lot more stock coming in. Bear around this all, all at my house. There's only so much you can really scale from your really living house. room but because you, of deliveries and stuff like you that. You can get it to still an impressive point. Yeah, like, 100%. Uh, from your living room. So just take us on that journey. So you put the two, 2.5K in. Yeah. Where, how did that start to grow? So the first month, I think, the first proper month, February, would have made about eight, £800 profit. Okay. And is this, was the... Was this with two, the 2,500 injected? It would have been, yeah. But as you know, with Amazon, it, it doesn't always, it's kind of, obviously you get paid like three, four weeks later, if you're yep. lucky. And yep. then, um, but I think the start bit's the hardest bit yep. because you wait, you've got, say if you invested a thousand pounds to get that thousand back out, you obviously you've got to sell it first. Yep. Then you've got to wait. wait for so your, that's what I'm saying. The more money you've got, the better. But I reckon once, I reckon, Three or four months in, you're laughing because you've got a constant cash flow, cash flow, which is what yeah. we've touched and on. And that's as well. what I think when starting out, it's important to not jump in day one. Yeah, put, you want to. Sp- you don't want to put all your eggs yeah. in one basket. No. You can just set a daily spend target. Yeah, yeah. And just say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna spread this money out over two weeks, um, or however long, depending on how much you've got. 
And because if you, it's very easy with Amazon. Like, I bet you we could go on the Discord right now and spend a grand. Yeah, you see. very easily. Yeah, but that's not the right way to do it. No, you need to spread out um, the capital that you've got. And because it might be that, let's say if we've only got a grand to spend, we put a grand into Amazon right now, tomorrow there could be a blind of a product and we can't buy it. Yeah. So you always want to have that reserve and always sort of be conservative and selective with where you're spending your money. So you did that and you did £800 profit. Yeah. How did it go from there? Yeah. So then from there, it just literally grew every, every single month because the luxury you've got with starting alongside nine to five is that you don't need to take any money out. Yep. Because if you've got your nine to five, you pay the bills, whatever, that's fine. But then I suppose that the Amazon business is kind of a savings pot, if you want yep. to look at it that way. Yeah. Because that money there is literally, you don't need to take anything out. Obviously and you might have, I don't know, you probably wouldn't have any expense at the start. Yeah. So everything that you make, you put straight back in. And it's a savings pot that grows at an alarmingly faster rate That's than 1% that yeah. the bank gives you. Yeah. Um, so that even if you look at it from that angle, yeah. and not even from the business point of view, from like a savings point of view. Yeah. Um, so yeah, going back to on that, so 800 pounds, and then so it literally just grew every month. It probably went 800, I don't know, 1.2, 1.5, 2. Literally, just like, literally every, if you look at my um, Amazon orange bars and stuff, every single yeah. month, just trajectory of up. 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 Then I said to myself in like January, February, that if I'm making, I want to be, I don't want to leave my job straight away. I want to make sure, obviously, I know it works. Yep. I want to be making double or even triple my monthly salary for three or four months. And then yep. that's when I can kind of take a take look at things. Yep. And that's what I did. Jump in. So yeah. where did you get to? At what point was it? What was your Amazon business earning profit wise uh, per month when you decided to leave? So probably be about three to four K. Cool. I would say. And that was sort that of- That was enough for me. Yeah, that was a confirmation. Yeah, yeah. And then, so you've sort of obviously continually grown and we'll jump into like certain key topics as we work through this, but just to sort of understand where you're at now. And as you went into uh, Q4, we'll touch on that. So Q4, I know for you in particular, was pretty, pretty big. Um, yeah. So how did that go? Run us through that. Yeah, so I left my nine to five in would have been September. So that's another thing I was thinking about as well because I know we've got Q4 coming up. Yeah. And I knew that obviously Q4 is a busy time. So I thought if I'm not working 40 hours a week, mm. I can put those 40 hours into Amazon yep. and make probably five times my salary. Yep. Um, so that's exactly what I did. So that when I left my um, nine to five, it actually coincided the exact same day I got my unit. Got it. So um, like we touched on before, there's only so much you can do from your living room mm -hmm. to the point where you've got people moaning at you and all these cardboard boxes. Yeah, yeah. Um, you've got deliveries coming in literally every day. Um, it's not sustainable. There's no kind of balance between work and home life. Yeah, you can't escape it. You can't escape it. Like I'll be watching TV and you've got six boxes. And it's just and playing on well. your mind. It's <laughs> like, right, I've got to do this, got to do this, got to do yeah, this. Yeah. There's no sort of yeah. uh, rest. Um, but... On that, with the um, when you left the nine to five, obviously then got your unit. What changed for you routine wise? Because I think this would help a lot of people. So you were doing the retail arbitrage in the morning. You was doing it on your lunch hour. You was doing it in the evening. But when you've suddenly unlocked an extra forty hours a yeah. week, yeah, what do you do? So it was me. It was more. I just did more of what I was doing, but mm -hmm. ten times more. So okay. I would literally. What I remember, I was driving to work. I, was like, oh, I hate hate doing this job. And I was thinking like my dream job would literally just be driving around, going to shops, making money that way, yep. go around scanning stuff. And that's what I was doing. Yeah. yeah. Literally go into, um, obviously supermarkets, clearance sections, whatever. Um, but when I left my nine to five, I could just do that more. Yeah. I wasn't really doing much online arbitrage yep. at that time. Obviously a few pings here and there from the discord. Um, but it was mainly, I'd say 90% RA. And also at that time, there wasn't that many, if any, people in, in where I live in Stoke, mm -hmm. that many people doing Amazon. Yeah. Whereas now it's a bit more saturated, but still it's never ever going to get saturated to the point where you can't make money. You can't make money with it. Um, so yeah, that's what I was doing. So I'd literally just drive. I'd, if I'd say like, I just treated it like a job. Yep. And I'd, I'd work, instead of going to work nine to five, I'd do my kind of nine to five, but more like 10 to four, whatever I could be bothered yep. to do that day. Yep. Um, and then I go... I'd fill my car up um, to the point where it's full. So I'd, drive, I'd pick like a city, not a city, yeah. but like an area town where I knew there's five, six shops. 
five, six shops there and then just do like kind of a little circuit. Yeah. Um, I don't know, on a good day, you'd spend a thousand pounds. Yeah. If you're lucky. Um, which ROI, with our uh, retail arbitrage, ROI is typically a bit higher as well. Yeah. So you might make, you're talking, what, 60% ROI? So you say, spend a thousand pounds, you might make five, six hundred quid. Yep. If you look at it from, if you've never, if you're in like a nine to five now, you're probably thinking like, that's, that's quite a lot of money yep. in that one day. And then I'd just go, go back to my unit, empty the boot and prep it. Yep. Send it back off from there. And so getting the, getting out of the nine to five and actually doubling down on this, has that been key to getting you to where you are today? Yeah, just in 100%, terms of scaling? 100%. Do you think you could have got anywhere close without doing it? No. Yeah. And that's, I think... Well, I could have, what I probably could have done. Yeah. But you've got, I think, other aspects as well. Like, you're going to be working 20 hours a day. Yeah. You've got to get you, to the figures that I've been doing. Yeah. And then you're not going to be happy. You're going to have time to do anything else. Yeah. You don't have time to go to the gym. And, you don't have time to eat. You, and, you'll be sleeping like two hours a day. And it'd be like, well, at that point, your nine to five is probably contributing 10% of your Literally. monthly yeah, yeah. monthly income. So it's like, well, I'm not, I'm not, it's not worth me sacrificing 50% of my time for 10% of the income. Yeah. And just for the actual sort of life benefits that you get. And that, that was another thing, because I know you were on about it earlier with the freedom. Yeah. Because like, I was thinking, like, I remember, like, the first times we organized filming together, obviously you've got been a bit busy recently, but the first times we, um, like, it was just like, well, when do you want to film? Well, whenever. any day, this week. Yeah, whenever. <laughs> any day. <laughs> whenever. And that's the great thing about yeah. it. And it's something that it's, I think it's very hard to conceptualize how that feels until you take it for it. granted, I think. Yeah. 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 And it's the, the sort of being able to, to do that and, um, sort of when you realize like for me, like I bet and I bet it was for you, like a very big day in my life was thinking like, was when I handed my notice it, like when my notice was in. Yeah. yeah. And it was like, then that day, which your last day. And then it's like, the world is my oyster. Literally, yeah, yeah. You wake up and yeah, you're yeah. just like. I remember that, that was such a good sleep yeah. that first day. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like, right, yeah. what are we cracking on with today? Yeah. And it is like to anyone, it's going to be nerve wracking. Yeah. Like it's going to be scary. You're going to second guess yourself. I still second guess myself today. Like, but it's sort of the, I think we know that, I think the, the, the skills that we'll pick up, even from doing this now, like we'll know that whatever we end up going to do in the future, like we'll be a lot more confident. Like let's say if a new business venture yeah. approached you, where previously without this experience, you might not have wanted to do it. Whereas now you think, oh, actually, well, I've done all this. I'll give this a go now. Yeah. And it sort of, it allows you to just do so much more. Um, so you've, yeah, so you, let's go back to that. So you did the unit, got the unit on the day that you left mm -hmm. and then um, obviously started doubling down on the RA. So what was Q4 like for you then? So Q4, so I reckon, I was thinking about it the other day, I reckon I probably did more, more revenue and profit in that Q4 period than I did previously in the rest of the year yeah yeah, yeah. which it tends to be the case with yeah. a lot of with not just amazon in general but amazon e sales just e-commerce online yeah, business yeah. because you've got the q4 you've got the rush for i don't know bonfire night or whatever it is you've got I mean, christmas being the you main black one friday as well black friday yeah yep. yeah so a, everything just goes through the roof yeah um and what that means for all as amazon sellers is there's a lot more Best opportunity time of the year. um i remember like um so i was speaking to sam about q4 last year um and he was saying like, because that was when he first started Amazon. And he said like when he was walking around like home bags and B&M, pretty much all of the toys had some money in it. Yeah, literally. And, but whereas if you go now, they don't. Yeah. You've got to be a, have a bit more of a keen eye. Yeah. But getting in at Q4 and being ready for Q4, if you know what you're doing, you've got the foundations in place, You like you did, you are geared up to make a ton of yeah, money. Yeah, and that's another reason for like leaving my job when I did. Because I knew that I'd leave me in a good position leading yep. up to Q4. Because if I still left my job, if I didn't leave my job at that point, I think I wouldn't have made what I did. Yep. Because a lot of the, we'll touch on this uh, later on, but a lot of the stuff that I found from RA, I would, I'd literally drive like, they're back, they're back, they're back. If I had a job, I wouldn't be able to do that. Yeah. I'd miss money. Yeah, yeah. Kind of thing. And that's it. The, it's the opportunity cost. Yeah. Where, yes, you can have your job and your nine to five and you can have your stable income but what's the cost of missing that opportunity? Yeah. And it was coming to the point where it was like to stay on a job was like detrimental. Like it doesn't make any, no sense whatsoever mm -hmm. just because of the polar opposite of and, but kind of that, incomes. I think again, that is something that people find 
hard to conceptualize where you can get a side hustle to the point where it is detrimental yeah. that you yeah, are yeah. still working your nine to five. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> like it was. Like, so for me, like, and I've touched on the podcast before, so anyone who's heard this, I'm sorry. But for context to any new listeners, when I um, started, like um, when I left the nine to five, so I was doing, I was working in um, corporate finance, mergers and acquisitions, which is like investment banking for anyone that doesn't know. Super busy there. I was studying to become a chartered accountant and I was trying to set up aftermarket my own business. Yeah. And that for me was horrific because it would be like, sit, I would start at 6 a.m., revise till a work eight till like six, revise till like, um, let's say till nine and then build aftermarket nine till one. Yeah. And then it's like- so you just burnt out. Yeah. You get to, I, burnt out. I fell off the gym. I fell off everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like didn't really speak to my friends, but it got, it gets to the point where then the side hooks like money, was like it's just like you can't if if you stay it's just like it's illogical yeah um, it makes sense and and it's something that i think people need to realize is possible for them um and i think that what you just said will res will hopefully resonate with people that mm -hmm. like fucking hell like that imagine having that feeling that is what's in front of you and it's yeah. what's possible yeah before we sort of move on to what you're doing a bit more now because i know you're um sourcing methods have changed mm -hmm. um what was the best item that you had in q4 in q4 would have been the electric blankets which everyone knows the about the infamous electric yeah, blankets. everyone knows about them. we've we've just hit a, uh, over 100k on youtube with our electric blanket video yeah and i think and i got on even on tiktok i think like i want to say like 65k views yeah, with yeah. um yeah matt from food review Club. yeah yeah i looked the other day um, on because I don't really use TikTok that much to be fair, but I think I got sixty five k views on it. Yeah, we our our um blanket one did. I think it was three million. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the infamous electric blankets now. And to be fair, they at the um, the Sun newspaper mm -hmm. wrote, wrote about the posters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I never I never knew nothing about that. It wasn't a bad piece to be fair. They didn't yeah. say anything bad. You didn't get a hit piece like me. No, no, no. No death threats. Uh, <laughs> I think I had a few comments on TikTok. So like like you did say yeah. like. It wasn't many, it's not probably four or five comments, but they're just funny. We've got 280 comments on the Aldi video on YouTube as of this morning. And I think three are positive. Really? Yeah. Um, I think it's a thing, it's quite funny though, actually. I quite enjoy reading them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that's it. That I just take those sorts of comments and as- And the end of the day, it's, it's boosts your traction anyway. It's engagement. Yeah. And that's the thing. Anyone who comments, hey, please know that I'm going to come back at you because I'm going to add fuel to the fire <laughs> and keep that engagement going. Um, yeah. And so, cause all you're doing is, is helping us get our name out there even yeah. more. Um, so with um, the electric blankets, now there's something I want to, I will touch on later, but dive into that product. What was it? How did you make your money? What did you do? So yeah, so with the electric blanket, so it turned out towards the end, these, the, did brick slightly in the end, yep. but I got it just the right time. It was basically where the first, the first batch I bought would was from um, Costco. Yep. So bear in mind, Costco is like fifty minute, probably about a two hour round trip. Um, we'll try and pop up me. the photo here. Yeah. Of of my boots. Of There's your, a video as well somewhere. Uh, yeah, and it was your entire car, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Where it's literally jammed. Right, it's like packed. airtight with blankets. Yeah. So with the blankets, what the the crap with them were is that so in, in um so i think they were actually they were released in supermarkets before mm -hmm. they were a bit more expensive yep. so i think they were released in um morrison's tesco little being the main ones and asda i think yep. um aldi is quite, quite a few so for example a single blanket would have been like um 20 pound but in costco it was like 16 pound 50. and then so basically in costco there's three different variants you had single double mm -hmm. and king all of them being obviously you probably make I reckon the ROI was over 100% on them. Yep. So you make like 20, 30 quid a blanket, give or take. Yep. Um, so it was actually my friend, Lewis. He actually sent me a message. He just started Amazon at the time. I remember it must have been like October time. He said, right, are these blankets any good? I was thinking, yeah, they're very good. Yeah. Um, and then I rang my local Costco, I rang two of them and um, said, oh, we're getting this batch in at this exit date, whatever. So I made a put, I literally drove to my Costco, I think it was in Chester. Um, and then I, there's a video on my Instagram wall will pop it up where there's literally, there's literally like a pallet, like an XL size pallet stacked 
here of different blankets and there was three of them. So you got a single Dublin King. And at the time, no one really knew about them yeah. apart from me. Um, so I do, I think that day, I think I bought all of them, I think, to the point where my Amex was... Um, completely maxed. Completely maxed. Um, so yeah, I just, I think I did about three journeys, well, six journeys in total in the space of two days. So I cleared out all the singles, trolley, I reckon probably about, with Koski, I did these little trolley things. I reckon I got about three or four of them. Did that, they're back, they're back, they're back over the course of two days. And then obviously packed them all, set them in that week. And then they just absolutely flew. So how many units you get in total, you know? From Costco, what about 500? 500 units. And what was the profit, like in total? On that, I don't, I'm not sure from Costco, but I know collectively, because I got yeah. them from Amazon price match as well. So yeah. Amazon, I got from all different supermarkets. But it was over, over four figures. Wow. So over five figures. Profit. I think it would have been five figures. Five, well, yeah, if you yeah. did 500 units. But the, the, these were selling over the course of four months. Don't yeah. forget. Yeah. From, I think it was November till even January, February. Yeah. But it was still, this is when it was absolutely freezing as well. Yeah. Like now you wouldn't be able to sell them now because it was mm. absolutely roasting. Yeah. And I bet that was like absolute elation when you seen yeah. those pallets yeah, yeah. and you were just like, fuck. Yeah, I can't believe it. I've hit a yeah. gold burn. <laughs> and like, it's just like the thought, like the feeling of like, Every single one in the trolley. Yeah, like, that like, 20 quid, 20 quid, yeah, yeah. 20 quid, 20 quid. Um, and that's one of the things that's most addicting with it. And when you find those products, just putting them in your basket, sort of thinking. Mm. That's where they are, it gets really, really addictive. Because yeah. you think like, and you just want to keep going. Yeah, you start to, and especially if you do a nine to five and work an hourly rate, um, or work an hourly rate, yeah, you, you will then start to appreciate that that effort of putting it in the basket, getting it home, label, box. Yeah. yeah. Min minuscule amount of time in comparison mm -hmm. to yeah. working an hour and having an hourly rate. Now, I've got a, maybe a bit more of an interesting um, sort of angle on the blankets because we get a, a shit ton of hate for it. But I think that one one of the the arguments we always get is like, well, my my family, my 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 parents were were cold and couldn't get a blanket or you're the fault that my kids were cold this year. And that is horrible to hear. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that at the end of the day, and this is probably going to be as quite controversial, there was always, there was cheaper alternatives. This was just one specific brand. Yeah. One named brand that people- It's more wanted. of a luxury, I think, to be fair. Yeah. This was just one named brand. Okay. And there was alternatives out there that were cheaper. They weren't branded. They weren't selling on Amazon. So people, first of all, had alternatives. They're just using this as an, an excuse to hate. Yeah. <laughs> but also, if people, so Amazon, people are willing to pay for the convenience of Amazon. Mm -hmm. Where if, if there's demand, someone's going to supply it. We supplied it. But if someone is complaining about having to pay an extra £20 on Amazon, I think when you, the way that I think a lot of us who are in this space and actually running our own businesses would look at it is that it's not our fault that you are in that financial situation and that you haven't taken a certain level of responsibility to account for your own financial standpoint mm -hmm. because it's like let's say if you're working a minimum wage job and you are um you're, you're struggling yes that is horrible but is there something you can do about it? Yes, there is. Of course there is. Of course there is. You just push yourself. And, well, I think it and, comes into a mindset and, thing as well. Like, yeah, and it's got what you haven't. That's the thing. It's the mindset. And so the point that I'm trying to get to here is that the people that are complaining, it's like, well, you could better your financial situation. There's no, no, and, literally nothing stopping them from going to Costco. Yeah. And do, buying uh, one yeah. and doing the same. Yeah. Or setting up a, another side business in an unrelated field yeah. that's going to help them. It's going to then like for me, I would use that. If I was at a point where I was really struggling, I would be thinking, right, how am I going to change this? How am I going to start to make more money? Because it's going to better my life. It's going to better all of those around me. And when I have kids one day, it's going to make their lives better. Mm -hmm. Like, I think it's a very selfish outlook when you're just passing the blame onto other it's people. It's like a victim mentality, yeah. isn't it? That's what it is. In, as opposed to thinking, I'm taking responsibility for my financial situation. As as good or as bad as it may be, if you think it could be better, that is on you 
to take action mm-hmm. and do something about that. You can't, if you sit and comment hate, use that time to be productive. Actually, yeah. You don't have to sell on Amazon. You can be mock, think that that could be completely against all of your morals to sell a product on Amazon. Set up some other side a business. Dog washing business. Yeah, anything, <laughs> anything. But you can't, for me, it's like, you can't complain um, if you're doing nothing about it. Mm-hmm. If you're trying and um, you're starting to build more money, you'll then, I think you would have a completely different optic well, again, on it. If you were, you wouldn't be commenting on other people's posts, would they? So I've not seen anyone who I know that is doing good in their field comment hate on anything. Oh, yeah. Anything. I don't know who these people are. That they always sit- have no profile picture as well in yeah. their posts. Yeah, and like weird name. It's just like, what is what's going on? Yeah. Um. And I. But the point being that if you are in a situation and it's bad, there is an option for you, and there there is alternatives. And sort of don't look at it at the angle where you're hating on those people that are doing more than you. Just think, what else could I do? How can I get to a point where this doesn't impact me? Where spending an extra twenty pound, and what? Yeah. Like that's the position that I want to be in. Mm-hmm. And that's the position that I think we're all building towards. It's like that, that same where you want to be able to shop without looking at the price tag. Yeah. Um, and you can get to that point as long as you put the work in. But if you're not willing to put the work in, I don't think you're justified to sit on YouTube or TikTok and comment, comment hey, <laughs> no. Um, so we'll move on from this bit now. But um, so we've touched on that. Now on to sourcing. Your sourcing has changed recently mm-hmm. um, and we'll touch on Amazon to Amazon in general, mm-hmm. um, because I know a lot of people, even that aren't, that don't have um, necessarily the, even people that don't have the luxury that you have, um, which we'll dive into, a lot of people will solely rely on Amazon to Amazon. So do you want to give people your take on what that is, how it works? So basically, in a nutshell, Amazon to Amazon, obviously it's another source of method. So predominantly, I reckon... Obviously, we'll touch on figures later on, but I reckon before any Amazon to Amazon, we've done over a quarter of a mil of sales. Yep. Purely from RA, Retail OA, tiny bit of Amazon to Amazon, yep. but not that much. But that's it's all purely from retail arbitrage. Yep. Um, so Amazon to Amazon, basically in a nutshell, is where you are buying from Amazon at a low price, wait till that price goes back up, and then you sell it at that normal price, yep. and you make the profit in between. Yeah. Um, another thing what people will be interested in as well is how do you bypass the kind of ordering quantities? Well, there's a few ways to do it. You can get more accounts. Yep. So normally on that product, it could be, I don't know, a bottle of water, for example, you might be limited to five. Well, yeah, you can get five, but then you can create another, you can create as many business accounts as you want. You create 50. So suddenly you've got, you've times the units you can get by 50. Yep. Um, or you can be lucky enough to get an Amazon unlimited account which solves all those problems <laughs> so but, um, the amazon unlimited account is an insanely powerful yeah tool. it's um basically it's like a i don't know what it's, it's like a money printer gold mine yeah. whatever you, what do you want to use i think money printer is the perfect like sort of angle to take it um because it enables you to do what did it do purchase unlimited <laughs> amount amounts yeah so so I, I did actually have this, I, I have had an unlimited account before yep. when I first started, it literally lasted about a week. Yep. So there's no luck to it. There's no, well, there, mean, sorry, there is, yeah, yeah. there's pure luck to it. Pure. There's no, people have kind of hypothesized about, you know, don't count, don't cancel yep. any orders. Yeah. Don't ask for refunds for Amazon. Don't go, don't go on to chat. Don't um, return anything. But my friend who I have access account to, he has also cancelled orders as well. So there isn't really any algorithm. And, and we've just had someone who's recently started Aftermarket mm-hmm. and I was on a call with him and he was like, Jack, like I've heard about these unlimited accounts, but I think I've got one. <laughs> and then he, um, I ended up jumping on FaceTime with him. I was like, show me. And so has he got one? Yeah. And he just started. Yeah. So it's just like, there seems to be no set formula. There isn't. But it's likely to happen at some point throughout your journey. If you're lucky. And yeah, when it does happen, you've got, it could be a small window. Mm-hmm. Some people, we spoke to some people who, um, like yourself, a week, um, I think JP had his for a week. 
Um, and then we had someone that came to us on Instagram recently and said, my Amazon Unlimited account's just been taken off me, but I had it for five months. Yeah. Where, where, where are you at I now? I'm coming up to that about, I remember it was the first week of March. So what are we now? About four months, I think. Yeah. But people think that like, it's not, obviously it's a massive, massive luxury, but you've still got to be smart with it. Yeah. Because a lot of it the time- also, It could be dangerous. It could be, yeah, yeah. Like, it could really mess up your cash flow. Yeah. Because people think, oh, you're lucky, you've got that like, instant profit. Well, it, it is and it isn't. Yeah. Because you've got to be smart. You've not got to, you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket, like we touched on before. Yeah. You've got to be a bit more strategic. And when sorry. you've got the opportunity to buy as much as you want. Yeah. You kind of, becomes, you don't want to get greedy either because yeah. it could be a detriment. Yeah, exactly. So the, the Amazon- well, It's a good Amazon, problem to have. Yeah, it's a very good problem <laughs> to have. And it's um, one that I think whilst you've got it, if you rinse it, you could, you can, you can set up your Amazon business for the future. Yeah. You could future proof yourself. Yeah. Um, for the next probably year, six months. If yeah. You're right. You can get yourself to a point where yeah. you've built up that much capital that you, it, you've changed the game for yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, what is like, so you mentioned the revenue before, so you had 250 K. Do you know where you're at now since you've had the Amazon to Amazon Unlimited? I am probably on to date. So I've been doing about 16, 17 months, about 350. 350k 350k yeah in Probably, total in total i think yeah so you don't... bear in mind a lot of that wasn't um most of all i've only been part-time i went part-time from february up until september and then full-time from september to today to, to, to today yeah what's that less than a year yeah less than a year um By about nine months yeah yeah so nine months at it and what so this is the thing with the unlimited account we don't know why you get it no. we don't know why it gets taken off you no you, I think for you now, it's a large part of your sourcing. Yeah, massive. Um, how will you adapt once it goes? I'll just go back to what I was doing before. Do you uh, think you'll just just bang RA? Or do you think you'll you'll still try and adopt more of an, uh, an OA approach? Or are you looking at wholesale? What? Yeah, I think all three, to be fair. Like, yeah. I, I genuinely enjoy doing RA. Yeah. So I probably, like, recently in the past, obviously well, since I've had limited, I've not done as much because from, like, a business standpoint it doesn't make any sense yeah if i well, can with amazon to amazon pin comes through okay three clicks yeah i could add 200 to my basket or whatever, whatever and I could, that could make me 2k yeah for example a good example that pinged i think a few weeks ago i don't mind talking about it because no one be, no one else will be able to get them i don't think um i bought six thousand um you know the bob martin yes. women tablets yeah, 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 yeah. so bear in mind they're literally this big yeah. so the smaller light we paid 95p, I think. Um, you also get quantity discounts as well. Yeah, that's what it was. It was 95p. Yeah. Uh, bought 6,000, um, which didn't really take up that much space. Yeah. It's a lot of units, but they, they, they kept coming over the course of about 10 days. Um, and they, they, they've they been selling now for about six pound, between five and six pounds. Wow. So I'm, I'm only making about, I think it's about one pound 50 profit. And I've got 6,000. So if they all sell at that, it's about 10k. Wow. Once they all sell. Yeah. Obviously, not all, they're not all going to sell in one month, but I think yeah. they had, I think the variation was at forty percent variation and something like eleven thousand sales a month. So they absolutely fly, and there's little, little to no returns because of what it is. Yeah, that's incredible. So that's that's and, one of the that's what, products yeah. that's been good. And like I've seen, we've seen in success. Anyone who's in aftermarket Discord has seen your yeah, success. Yeah, Instagram. And and yeah, your Instagram with the the numbers of like when when there's been a big ping. Everyone, I think, anticipates pop, pop uh, success post it. with like 400 yeah. um, or whatever it may be. Um, but... Well, I, I know that's not going to last forever. Yeah. And, so, and, but the thing is, it's like you were, you'd were you already proven... Yeah, I've always ability. done numbers like, before that. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah what was... Because what was your best month profit-wise that you did before that? Before that. So this was in Q4, about 11 grand. 11 grand. Yeah, about so 11 grand December. in one month profit. And that was pretty much purely retail arbitrage, right? Pretty much, yes. Yeah, so that would have been Q4. So that would have been a mixture of blankets. Because don't forget the blankets they sold over the course of about four months. Yeah. So yeah, Q4 um, would have been like even like little gift sets from like you're only making like two three good profit, but you're getting like hundred of them. Yep. And f- if say I went to B and M, this particular gift set there'd be like fifty in each store, for example, and then I'd just go around, fill my boot, yep, send them off, up. make money, and so. Yeah, so you've got that and then you're going to, you sort of, yeah, you'll adapt your approach. Now, 
once you sort of get past the unlimited phase and you go back into those, how are you gonna, are you still, do you still think that retail arbitrage will be your main bread and butter? Or are you, because I know that you've started to move into wholesale a bit, mm -hmm. you think that that will start to take over? What do you sort of see as the future with yourself? I reckon I'd still, I really enjoy retail arbitrage. So yeah. I will still be doing that maybe one or, but to, to be fair, now we're, we're, when we come into Q4, I'll probably do three or four days uh, retail, retail arbitrage. arbitrage because it's there's that many sales on. And I know when, and I kind of know, I built a few relationships in stores where I know what's discounted yep. at a certain time. Um, yep. So like in that, for example, in one particular store, they have like a two for 10 two for 10 pound or two for 20 pound. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I know. And they sell on Amazon, like little Barbie dolls and stuff like that. So stuff that doesn't sell now, but in Q4 absolutely flies. Um, so going back to what you said, I'd probably say, it depends on the time of the year. So Q4 will mainly be RA. RA. Obviously, um, whatever gets pinged. To be fair, with, with online arbitrage, I don't really enjoy it that much. Yeah, yeah. I don't really like sitting down on a computer and sourcing. So the first be open at yeah, it. Yeah, before doing and, it. And that's the thing. The, another beauty of Amazon, if you don't want to leave your house when you're starting out, you don't really have to. Yeah. If that's for you. Yeah. yeah. Or if you're someone that likes to get out there and get stuck in. Yeah, like which you, I prefer to do. You can do that. So yeah. you, really, you can do it. You can do whatever suits your own personal preferences mm -hmm. as well. And I don't think a lot of businesses would really allow for that. No. It's <laughs> sort of like a lot of stuff, it might be right. Yeah, you've got to be glued to a desk for 12 yeah. hours to so build that's this like business. that's my worst nightmare. Yeah. But with this, you've got either or. Again, another sort of point to, to start Amazon. Mm -hmm. um, Go, going back to what you're saying, I reckon the split would be, I want to, I want to get into wholesale. Yeah. I've dabbled a bit slightly. Um so yeah, I reckon this is a mix of, to do a mix of everything, not to focus solely on one yep. thing. But I think going forward, I reckon wholesale is obviously it's more scalable. Everybody yep. knows that uh, the profits might not be as high in the margins and stuff like that. But I reckon going forward, because now I've got obviously seen how how much my business has scaled since having the unlimited, where I'm ordering thousands of units. I reckon if I apply that to wholesale as well, yep. that can obviously work as well. So one thing that I imagine a lot of people have in mind and i know like jp went through it recently um and found it a little bit challenging and i think a lot of people think it's very daunting that registration yeah what did that look like for you how did that change how you run your business and how did you sort of come out of that the other side because i think a lot of people think oh that registered is over yeah it's over I've burnt the loop done mm. hit the limit what did you do to carry on it was just kind of the more more of the same of what I was doing, but being a bit more selective. Yep. Because VAT is part of part of life, part of running a successful business. Yep. There's no way that you can't hide it. So you just got to embrace it. Yep. And then you can also use it to your advantage because when, if and when you do get into wholesale, yep. a lot of the bigger brands, a lot of the bigger distributors or whatever, they actually want need you to be VAT yeah, registered. They'll only deal with you if you're VAT because, registered. Because if you're going to a brand, let's say if you get onto wholesale, you're a sole trader, you're not VAT registered, you're obviously build a relationship with them. They're not going to take you as seriously no. as if you're obviously VAT registered, limited company, website, you, yeah. you look the part. So I, I think VAT registered is just, is what it is. You've got part, to be more selective, but it's part of life. It's part of the game. And I think that, yes, a lot of people are scared of it, but if you, if you put off hitting the threshold yeah, or shoot yourself off, in the foot, yeah, you are literally just only allowing yourself to reach a certain point. Yeah. You've got to get through it carry on and adapt and then the sky's the limit yeah because also touching on that as well there, there is ways around it. you can sell zero rated vat products which i've can. been doing yep For example coffee contraception i've been selling a few condoms they're five percent vat we rated we did see on the uh we was uh we was on that the other day and it was jp actually yeah because with the uh one of the amazon monitors that we're testing uh the amazon to amazon monitor um we seen um uh, condom ping yeah and then um we had a affiliate tag on it and then one of the guy that runs the affiliate account and who's who's trying to have a busy weekend yeah, that's what he said. and i was thinking <laughs> there's only my staff that have got access to this monitor so i was like i know it must be one of them yeah well, J think jp before. sent us a photo of a load of johnny's yeah. i was like fucking hell um but yeah so there is like <laughs> there is a um, ways and means about it and like i said it opens doors. Yeah. As much as it's daunting, there is a plus side to yeah. it. And if you're in Amazon for the long term and you actually want to build a business that's going to run 
for the foreseeable future, you're going to have to deal with it. And then, like you said, embrace it and then use it to your advantage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you, did you find RA become more difficult when doing uh, post VAT registration? Not really, no. No. It's the same. You've just got to be a bit more selective. Uh, Stuff that was, because I work on about 30% ROI. Yep. Well, online anyway, but with retail arbitrage, even more. For example, something that might have been profitable when I was when I was not VAT registered to now, I probably wouldn't pick up. Yep. Unless it's sold like in the hundreds or thousands a month, then I could see. Or if it's zero VAT rated, which I was on the on the hunt for as well. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah. So you right now, obviously more freedom from doing Amazon FBA. Mm-hmm. What does your daily routine look like at the moment? So at the minute, um, so I don't set an alarm for start. Yep. So I haven't set an alarm. Ever, unless I've got to be somewhere at a certain time, but I wake up eight, nine o'clock. So, um, so none of this guru bullshit saying no, you must I'd, be up at 4 a.m. No, none of that. Yeah. No. <laughs> Obviously, it's good to get up early, yeah. but for me, I, 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 I'm the other way. So I go to bed like quite late, like some days one, two o'clock. Amazon, exactly so also the Amazon payments coming at two o'clock as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> and so, you can, because I, you can, I request daily payouts on yeah. Amazon and that depending on the daylight saving time, the clocks and stuff, it's either 12 or one. So one o'clock, refresh, pay now, go to bed. Yeah. And then I get up whenever, I do a bit of work from home, whatever. And then what I do is go to the gym every day about 12 o'clock, 12, one o'clock. From there, go to my unit, pack what needs to be packed, whatever deliveries that I need to do mm-hmm. and stay there till it's done. Could be, could be there two hours, could be there eight hours, completely depends. And then go home, that's it done. Where, how much time out of your day do you allocate to sourcing at the moment? So the minute, whilst I've got the, obviously Amazon Unlimited, it's just kind of, I just go about my day to day as and when, and then I'll, I'll still do a bit of online arbitrage as well. Yeah. So whether that be from myself, which I don't enjoy doing that much, um, or through aftermarket yep. pings. And so as you've sort of started to scale and you're, so as you just gone through your routine and like you're obviously scaling um, quite aggressively at the moment, especially with the Amazon account, um, have you ever dabbled with prep centers? Yeah, I have, yeah. So this was going, leading on to um, what I was going to say next, is that I think there's only so much, well, the good thing about Amazon is that you can scale it to whatever point you want to scale at. So recently I've, uh, my good friend who um, I've met through a connection mm-hmm. from literally just, I think on Instagram, I think, he recently opened a prep center and then there was a ping a few weeks ago, you've probably seen the big le- uh, Lego bricks. Yep. Um, I ordered 500, nice. um, which were pretty heavy. They're about that big. They weigh about, I think about five kilos. Yeah. So you can only fit about four in a box. So I sent, um, I think I sent him about 300 of them. Yeah. So he, so that's me outsourcing the prep. Yeah. So I think he paid about, I paid about 80p a unit, two pound a box, something like that. But that's me. I can focus on other stuff yep. while that's kind of getting done in the background. So remember that it was that week where I had unbelievable amount of deliveries. So I thought, right, for this particular product, it's quite heavy, it's quite big. I'll get this sent to a prep center. And then in the background, I can be doing other stuff that, yep. so I'm kind of doubling down. Yep. And you've got other people doing stuff whilst you're, again, this, doing money-making activities. Again, and that's it. It's sort of where you're outsourcing the labor work mm-hmm. and you're focusing on the profit-making yeah. opportunities. Yeah, yeah. like um, sourcing. Yeah. Um, also, we have dabbled in a VA as well. Yep. It's not much luck. Right. And um, this was, was done. That? This was done through a um, like a third party company agency. I remember Lewis Me and, telling yeah, me about yeah, this. Was yeah. it called like Global? Something, something like, like that. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Which he he dealt with it all. To be fair, um, so it's where you pay. But this, this is basically with VA, there's two ways. If I'm aware, you can either find one on say Fiverr yeah. or from with all from the Philippines. Yeah. Um, where you'd have to physically train them to whatever level you want to train them at. Um, but with doing it through an agency. Well, this is what they say anyway, that they train them for you. You pay out obviously one up fee and then it's like 120 quid each a month, I think we paid, something like that. Okay. Well, the quality leads weren't the best. So we kind of knocked that. We tried that for about three or four months. I think I bought one thing. And oh, then wow. in the end, that was even wrong because it was a two pack, but it was a one pack oh, on Amazon. Okay. So it just didn't work. So we sacked that off. And now um, it's just obviously Amazon to Amazon, RA and, and OA. Got it. But Got I can it. see why having a VA would be good if you if you know how to use it yep. and you know how to train them because the VA is only as good as 
you yeah, yeah, train yeah, to yeah. be. A lot of it is, and it also with VAs, it comes down to actually continually motivating and yeah. incentivizing them yeah, as yeah. well, doesn't it? That's part of it where you've got to, you could you can train them, but are you, at the end of the day, you're, you're becoming someone's boss and it's both mm-hmm. how do you manage that person to get them to perform at their best? Because um, at the end, it was coming to like a bit of a burden. Like you'd yeah. have to chase them. Like, have you done this? Have you done that? It's yeah. just, it's too not, long. Not worth your time. Not worth it. So with the, obviously the prep center stuff, do you plan to use those again in the future? Would you ever consider outsourcing entirely to a prep center? Or on that, why haven't you looked, or you may have looked at actually just hiring someone to work from your unit and just, just handle the prep for you? I think a lot, I think I actually, I actually quite enjoy the prep. day-to-day stuff and prepping. Yeah. Like I just sit in my unit, I've got a podcast on, music on, whatever. Um, and then I just sit there. I think I found it quite relaxing. Yeah. Like labeling like a thousand yeah, units, yeah. literally chucking in the box. Yeah, yeah. Um, but for the heavy stuff, I like I said, I have I have outsourced that. Yep. Um just for that particular one product. Would you do it again? Yeah, I would do it again, yeah, yeah. So yeah, not yeah. a bad experience. Whatsoever. Yeah, it's good, very good experience. Good, 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 good. Yeah. And do you so I've I've seen a lot sort of like a lot of big players in the space outsource yeah 100 percent. yeah I, ca- I can see why they do that because yeah. at the end of the day you be, you being sat there prepping isn't necessarily a money-making activity yeah whereas you can the only thing that you can you can control with amazon is the sourcing yeah so i can see why people would do it that way around as opposed to the other way around yeah um because i know someone who's got a 100 percent prep center yep. no va so if you think about it, if you're treating that as a job you're literally just sat there nine to five on your desk, sourcing, ordering stuff, sent to the prep center. You don't, you don't need to do anything. Yep. Yeah, the yeah. only stuff that you'd need to prep would be like RA stuff. Yep. Yep. Makes so sense. I, I can see the, I can see why you would do that. It's, it's, it's not passive. It's never, ever going to be passive Amazon until you've got like a massive operation place where you've got a VA prep center and everything's outsourced. Yeah, yeah. But I think to get to that point, I think it's hard. Do you, work. do you ever envision that being your future or not? I don't think so, no. Until I fall out of love with doing what I'm doing, mm-hmm. I'll continue to do it. And so on this, sort of everything that you've amassed so far, you've obviously been doing this for over a year now. Do you have, has there been any particular mistakes that you've made that you think the listeners would benefit from, like knowing about? I would, oh, not really, no. I think... You learn as you go on, don't you? Yeah. That with any business, like yourself, you obviously would have made mistakes yeah. at the start. But I think it's more with Amazon, it's kind of knowing the right products to buy. Mm-hmm. That's obviously the, the aim of the game, knowing what to buy. But obviously, there's, there's a lot of products I've took a loss on or broke even on just because I want to get the cash back. Mm-hmm. Um, so general rule, I try to, if it's not sold in three months, so I, I don't use a repricer at all. Yep. So I do it all manually. Um, so I've seen a lot of horror stories and you would have seen them as yep. well where literally that SDK has crashed. Yeah. All stock gone. Yeah. You lost I've money. Uh, and then... So I, uh, I don't trust them yep. personally. Yeah. And it is, you're, you're putting your faith in a tool yeah. and that tool can go uh, Literally a whole business. It yep. could like ruin your business. Yeah. So I I, I, um, I price everything manually and if it hasn't sold in about three months I then change it if I need to not brick it. I don't brick stuff. Um, Freudian slip there, the guys. He's revealed his card. <laughs> um, I just kind of look at the price, kind of drop it, kind of make a loss on it, get money back and just go again. Yep. That's what sense. it is. Makes sense. And so to anyone new starting Amazon FBA today, any top tips? Just to start, I think. There's no real, I wish I could say there was like a massive, blueprint but there really isn't Mm -hmm. just getting started getting around a community or like-minded people Mm -hmm. and then just running with it like you asked me at the start what is the why why are you doing it for like if you're doing it just for money like money never ends because what what is money is you get money do anything and that's the thing as well like i think a lot of people will be like oh and I i remember being told this um where um I can't remember who asked the question. I was in a room with someone who was very, very wealthy uh, from a very wealthy family mm-hmm. um, that we met on holiday. And someone said to them, like, oh, you all like something about always being around rich people. And she turned around and went, well, well what's rich? Yeah. Because it's subjective measure. Yeah. Same, same with success as well. Yeah, exactly. Like, what is success? Yeah. Because, because 
some people will feel rich if they are making a hundred grand a year. Mm-hmm. Other people that will not touch the sides. Um, some people it will be fifty grand, um, depending on what it's sort of what suits you. And again, it's like you said, it's finding your why, your goals, setting them, and then probably just attacking them mm-hmm. uh, and ticking them off as you go along. And then I think at that point, because when I think a lot of people get in their mind that when I, when I hit this point, I'll be happy. And I'm guilty of this. Yeah, I think I was as well. When with we get to this level, I'm going to be happy. You'll see the number and then you'll be like, oh, is that it? Yeah. Right. <laughs> back, like, back to yeah, it. Yeah. Like when, when we did, um, when we um, hit, I'm not sure if I'm going to include this, but like our only reaction was like Sam straight over, straight over to me, shook my hand, yeah. like, hugged me and was like, congrats. And like, but That's then it. it was just like, right now back to work. We literally yeah. just both went and sat down yeah, and carried yeah. on. And it's, I think everyone puts hitting financial milestones on a pedestal. Yeah. But when you actually hit them, you realize, oh, nothing's changed. Nothing's changed. Exactly. Still same. sat here. Yeah. There's still clouds in the yeah, sky. Yeah. Um, yeah. What's next? And I think you've just got to get in the routine of attacking your goal, ticking it off, attacking, like setting new ones, attack, attack, attack. Mm-hmm. And then before you know it, you'll be at a point where you never envisioned you could be when you started. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is something that I think if you can get in the habit of doing that and actually smashing your goals, mm-hmm. you're going to, you, you sort of, you're not going to go wrong. Um, mm-hmm. And you, you, you're you not going to ever lose motivation. There's always going to be something to work towards, mm-hmm. something to build towards. And having that why is key to that. Yeah. Um, I think it's good to have, it's good to have fin- kind of financial milestones to hit. But I think some, I don't know, I'm not guilty of this personally, but some people might get a bit too caught up on it. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. I want to make 10K a month. And if I don't do that, if I fall short, I make eight or nine, that it's the, the world's over. Yeah. And and also, um, I've spoken to quite a few people about this. And when, the, and, and I've seen like, um, I think it's like Iman Gards, he's mentioned it. Mm-hmm. And said like, when you're at like 10 to 20K a month, that is when like, that's life's good. Mm-hmm. But it, when you push and you're aiming for 40, 50, that's when stuff starts to break. So if that's to go wrong, yeah. you can get caught up in everything. Mm-hmm. You get consumed by it. And that's where you just need to get to a point where you're happy. Well, if you will ever get happy. But what I'm trying the point I'm trying to prove is that like you get into 10 grand a month, you might feel great when you're at that. If you're bringing yeah. in 10 grand profit a yeah. month, you might feel on top of the world and life might be easy. But if you get then want to push and you get to 100 grand, you might think, fuck, I've got no time to myself yeah, again. It's not worth and it. then you was like, what was the reason I left my nine to five for more freedom? Yeah. Now I'm earning all this cash and I've got no freedom again. Yeah. So it's about finding your balance. Yeah. Um, I, I definitely think that's important. Um, so pretty much rounded everything off Amazon wise. Mm-hmm. Um, but we did sort of venture into it a little bit then and more so about um, more personal attributes um, about what you need to be successful in business and with Amazon. Um, but, for um, yourself, what have you found that has been key to sort of being successful in Amazon, sort of mindset-wise? Mm-hmm. I think first thing I'd say, I, I, don't, I don't really class myself as that successful yet. Like, I can see other sellers doing like seven figures yep. over a 12-month period. So to me, I'm like a small fish. Yep. So I don't think like, oh, I've made it because I've done this amount, this amount. I'm just trying to kind of, as long as I've got, I'm, I, as long as I'm, I'm happy with what I'm doing, I've got the kind of freedom to do what I want, yep. when I want. Like I said, I don't really set any kind of financial goals as such. Yep. I just kind of take each day as it comes, try my best. And then if I'm happy, I'm happy. Yeah, And that um, I think is super important as well, because I've been guilty of this, of um, not necessarily staying in my own lane mm-hmm. and being disheartened. Nah, not get too ahead, too ahead of yourself. Yeah, being disheartened by seeing other people's mm-hmm. numbers and just thinking, oh, like... How do I get to that? What like, yes, you can look at it and use it as motivation, but if you start to get distracted and put your efforts in focus and you realize I'm spending more time stressing while I'm not there, mm-hmm. as opposed to actually just being productive, carrying on, persevering, then you're gonna you're gonna end up shooting yourself in the foot. So I think, um, I think so one of the worst things you can do as well is to compare your journey to someone, someone else's. else's. Exactly, because That's everybody's the worst thing you can different. Do. And the one thing that I think is comparable everyone had to start one day. Yeah. And whether you started with 
two hundred pounds or you started with ten grand. Mm -hmm. In your mind that day, you had to choose to start. And everyone's in the same boat there. Now you're gonna go off in wild, everyone no one is gonna have the same journey. But everyone who is doing whatever numbers on Amazon, all one day they decided to take action yeah. and get to that point. And if you sat there, sat on the fence and been thinking about it for months, even years, we've got people that will say that the, they've been watching content for years and wanted to start, but never been able to bite the bullet. You need to remember that everyone that's successful at one point were literally just in your position. They're not special. They're not Elon Musk. Yeah, like, they just started. Yeah, yeah, they just decided to start. Yeah. Um, and that's, that, like you said, going back to that biggest tip for a beginner, just started. Mm -hmm. What is one sort of tip that you've learned along the way mindset wise that's helped get you to where you are? I think just to keep going. So uh, like, no, I wouldn't say there's any kind of massive, massive secret. It's just to keep going, never give up. Because if you never give up, you obviously you can't, can't fail. fail. Like, yep. So I think when I, when I, going back to when I left my nine to five, like a lot of a few probably close friends or well, not close friends, probably fa more family members, I think mm -hmm. like, what if it doesn't work? Like, well, I, I don't, like for me, I, that doesn't come across in my mind to think like, yeah. What if it doesn't work? I've never thought about that because it wouldn't happen. Yeah. Um, and because I feel like if you stress on that too much, it will almost become a self-fulfilling yeah. prophecy where you will lead yourself down a path yeah. and keep convincing yourself at certain points, oh, it's not working. Yeah. Oh, it's not working. It should be obstacle. How do I overcome it? Yeah. Okay, next one. Not so I, I was that sure that it would work. That, yeah. that thought never even crossed my mind. Mm -hmm. I thought, right, worst, very, very worst case scenario, I... It fails I, the next day, get a job. Literally, that's it. And it's as simple as that. Yeah. I think the the one that we always relay and it sort of what you it sort of echoes you there is just the consistency. And as long as you persevere, you don't give up and you're consistent day in, day out, like you've got your routine. Day mm -hmm. in, day out, do yeah. the same. Get up, do the work. It could be a day where like and I'm sure like everybody's been there where you'll get no sales on Amazon. Yeah. That doesn't mean you panic yeah. and flap. Yeah. It's part of the process, mm -hmm. building a business. Yeah. Um, no one's successful from day one. You've just got to persevere, stay consistent, and trust in it. Um, and that's one of the things, the good thing about Amazon is because like being part of like a community or just seeing people online doing well with Amazon, you've already sort of got some level of assurance that the business yeah, model does it work. Works, yeah. It does work. You've just got to be consistent. It's only going to get there. bigger as well. 100% mm -hmm. going to get bigger. The, have you seen the keeper data for how many uh, products they monitor on Amazon? Uh, it's if you literally go and watch the live tracker, it's like ding ding ding. ding. Yeah. It's over three hundred million. Over three hundred million. That's why a lot products. of people think like, oh, what if it gets saturated on Amazon? Like even if every single person in the UK did Amazon, it still wouldn't be saturated. Obviously, not. Like it's, <laughs> it, and the, the thing is, is that it's the product range is ever expanding. Yeah, and people think, oh, there's too many Amazon sellers, but how many of those Amazon sellers? drop off two months in when it when yeah. when the, when it becomes a little bit challenging less than that so it's like there's you can you can complain about it becoming too saturated and stuff like that but for me the saturation argument it's just an excuse for being lazy yeah it's a method of justifying why you shouldn't be doing it and you can just sit on the couch instead yeah um <laughs> because if it's like basically you're giving yourself if you if like validation just, why yeah you're work. validating your yeah. need to sit there and do nothing. Yeah. And you, because it gives you peace of mind. It's like, nah, I tried it. It's saturated. I can just sit and watch Netflix now. Yeah. <laughs> like that's it. Yeah. But remember, there's going to be someone else out there like you that's going to sit there. And take action. And think, right, oh, it's getting a little bit more challenging to find products. What else can I do? What else <laughs> can I be doing in my day-to-day -day routine yeah. to put myself one step ahead of everyone else? Mm -hmm. And if you, you've got that in you, you will find a way to make it work. Mm -hmm. So before we round it off, um, great podcast. And I'm pretty sure everyone who's listened um, has gained a ton of value and hopefully, yeah, hopefully motivation as well. But the future for you, are you planning ahead? Do you think Amazon is going to be forever for you? Or are you sort of, because we, we've got people that, like we had another guest on who used reselling to basically build enough money enough capital to fund his catering business. Mm -hmm. Do you ever envision taking the money you've made, putting it into something else, a passion project, or are you just purely focused on Amazon um, sort of tunnel vision? 
Yeah, I think for, for the foreseeable, at least anyway, I can't, obviously I want to start with a bit, I've got a few business ideas I want to start in the future, whether that's alongside Amazon or, I think the good thing about Amazon is that you can kind of make as much or as little as you want. You can scale it to whatever point you want. Scale. And so even if you didn't, you could, I could start another two or three businesses yep. and whilst I wouldn't make probably nowhere near as much as I'm making now, mm -hmm. you still, it'd still be profitable. Yeah, well, it's like, that's like myself. Yeah. Like literally you start, like, you've got a few different businesses, haven't you? Yeah, so a few I think different businesses. Fingers in different pies. Yeah. I think that's key. And Amazon is what I, we sell it as after my yeah. kit. For me, it's a side hustle. Yeah. Um, it brings in good money every month. Yes, I could grow it if I wanted to, but would it? Would I then lose time on other projects that I want to build? Yeah. Yes. Um, but you're right. And the good thing about Amazon, like you're saying then, if it gets too much, you can just scale it back down. Yeah. yeah. No one's forcing you to buy that extra inventory. You can just cool off. Yeah. Um, so you've got sort of that in mind. Is there anything that you... Is there anything that's sort of ahead of your immediately in the sort of short short to medium term that you want to take on as well or in that sort of short medium term is it just amazon and then the bigger pictures may be something alongside amazon like i said for the foreseeable so i, I, I genuinely enjoy like the day-to-day -day hustle of mm -hmm. you know it sounds stupid about packing boxes i yeah, actually yeah. like doing it yeah yeah uh, so until i get bored of that i mean I, I don't try to look too far ahead anyway because obviously stuff changes all the time um so yeah for me for, at this moment in time, it's just Amazon, a few other bits. Um, but going forward, who knows? Who, who knows? knows be? Who knows? Okay. It's like one one connection yep. could lead to nothing. 10 different people and that could change anything. Yeah. And that's another good point, actually, before we round it off. Um, I think that a lot of people, again, because of the sort of the way that the schooling system works, thinks that you have to have a certain qualification, you've got to be able to pass this test, this interview, mm -hmm. where actually having your connections is it's vital. more valuable. Yeah. 100%. It's, I know it's a cliche saying, but yeah. it's not what you know, it's who you know. I was just about to say the same, yeah. and, but it's so true. Yeah. And I think when you get to a certain point, like you, um, I think when you, when you start to start to realize that and you look at the people around you, I think, how could we work together? Because there's yeah. always going to be a value exchange. Yeah, yeah. They've got a gain from you, you've got a gain from them. Yeah. No one's handing out freebies. Mm -hmm. But, if there's a synergy through networking, through relationships, it, it can be massive for you. Yeah. And I think nobody, like whatever your age is, if you're young, you've got to take that seriously. Um, because like, even like for you, your boxes. Yeah. All start with relationships. Yeah, you, yeah. You've got- Even the prep center as well. Yeah, and there you yeah, go. Yeah. So that's all come from relationship on Instagram. Yeah. I bet when you started speaking to him, you had no idea it would lead to where it has today. No idea, no. Um, and no. yeah, never underestimate it. And importantly, guys, never burn bridges. Yeah. Um, a lot of people turn the back on people. Yeah, uh, oh, when, that's, when, that's when, a big when, massive one. Yeah, when they shouldn't. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and you just stay humble as well. Yeah, that's the main thing. It, like. um, um, one million percent, because if you get to a point where you think you're ahead of people and you just turn your back on them and you're like, oh, no, because it, I, it will happen where that person, you need them one day. Yeah. There'll be something there where they can help you or there's something. And if you've damaged that relationship, you will crucify yourself for it. Yeah. So keep them relationships, guys. But yeah, we're pretty much rounded this out. Now, there is something that we're working on together, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So just before we round up, guys, if you want to learn more about Pock's journey, Alex's journey, um, and where he got to, how he got to where he is today. We're building something together. So this will be coming to the aftermarket arbitrage community. So if you want to get in on it, you've got to be part of that community. But do you want to run through what we're building? So I don't want to say too much on it now, because still yeah. in process and we've done about half of it, I reckon, yeah. a third. Um, but it's something that's going to obviously add a lot of value. And I'm very excited to actually work yeah. on it. I think it's going to take everything's just to the next level. Yep. It's going to help out a lot of people. Um, I will give one sneak peek. It's to do with retail arbitrage, guys. So this will be something that will become um, sort of a very powerful tool within your Amazon business. So we're going to... Especially come up to Q4 as well. It's going yep. to be the busiest time. So if you can arm yourself with that, Use this. I'm not going to say too much. Use it to your advantage. Yeah. You're going to put yourself in the best position for Q4. We will keep the announcements in the Aftermarket Arbitrage Discord. And to anyone watching, when we air this, 
Aftermarket 2.0 will have gone live, loads of new features. So if you are part of Aftermarket and you've experienced them, let me know in the comments down below what you think. But think pretty much everything, mate. Great podcast, ton of value. You've learned from a guy today who started his nine to five, worked his way up through Amazon, left the nine to five, now runs a great business, has a great lifestyle and sort of shows you what's possible. It's a, you become the perfect case study for Amazon. Um, so thank you very much for coming on, mate. Welcome, I've enjoyed it. Yeah, and what we'll Good. do is we will pencil in another one of these. Yeah. So we will maybe revisit this six months, 12 months time, whatever it is, and we'll do a catch up and update. So guys, if you want to see that and see how much he's built his business in that time window, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you want to get in contact with us, go into the description. There's a there's a Calendly looking there's a Calendly booking link. Click that link, get on the phone with me, and I will show you how you can get started with Amazon. Thank you for watching, everyone, and we'll catch you on the next one.